What's up, everybody? My name is Post-Production Pi, Editor-in-Chief for SRLounge.com. Welcome to another installment of our weekly Ordinary to Extraordinary Raw Edit featuring the Lightroom Preset System V5. Now, as always, we will be demonstrating how to create our effects using the Preset System first, and then we're going to be going through the actual settings just to help everyone understand what's going on behind the scenes. So if you have the presets, if you don't, well, everybody can benefit. Now, if you are interested in learning more about the SR Lounge Lightroom Preset System, then simply click in the link below in the description to take you over to the SR Lounge store. That being said, let's jump right in. In this video, we're going to take things a step further. We're going to be taking what we learned so far. We're going to be applying that same soft color, that flattering color look to this portrait. But since this is a headshot, we're going to take it a step further and basically do a professional retouch session inside of Lightroom. Now, of course, if you're doing actual professional retouch, it does need to be done inside of Photoshop, but we can do a lot of retouch and a lot of great effects right here within Lightroom, and you can get really great professional results using the preset system. So let's get started. We're going to jump first and look at our information real quick. This was shot in a 5D Mark III at 1 200 of a second F9 ISO 100. Again, it was taken on a 100 millimeter macro lens, which I love this lens for portraits. It looks awesome. And for lighting, we're kind of using these reflectors to create this clamshell forward lighting that you might see on like say a Peter Hurley portrait. We're gonna actually have a, uh, a video on that later on, so it should be good. Stay tuned for that. All right, now when we get started, what I wanna do with this image is since I'm noticing a little bit of dust, before I do anything, I'm gonna apply my dust correction curve and let's go ahead and just fix those little dust spots. So just taking our uh, brush tool, we're just gonna basically click and remove these. Now, generally I like it to select from close by. These are jumping far away, but we'll take a look at it and if it looks kind of weird in a second, we'll just make adjustments to those. So let's just quickly remove this dust. Now, one thing, there's gonna be a little bit of difference here inside of Lightroom 4, uh, or inside Lightroom 5 versus Lightroom 4. We can actually click and drag now so we can remove little bits of stuff like this. Now, generally I would still go into Photoshop for that but it doesn't do a bad job. So let's go and hit reset curve now, and let's take a look and just make sure our dust looks okay. So it actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna raise up the exposure a bit so I can see. Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. It looks quite nice actually. All right, now with that reset curve, I can go back up to our soft category. I'm not gonna use one of the import resets because it will actually reset out my uh, my adjustments that I just made with my spot removal tool. So we're just gonna select the actual preset that we want. We want the extra soft skin desaturated preset. We don't wanna go with super soft because it's gonna be too soft for this image. So with that selected, I'm just gonna drop down and let's flip to an exposure that looks about right for this image. That's gonna be again, somewhere between 0.5 and one. So let's just leave it at 0.5 for now. I also wanna go down and add just a bit of shadow blacks, not a lot, just a slight darkening amount to get a little more pop. Again, we're gonna be doing some detail enhancing and other things in a second. I wanna have it a, a very natural, nice look to this image. So this is looking great so far. Pretty much everything beyond this point is gonna be done with our adjustment brushes and, and filters and so forth. So let's go over our settings. Now we have our exposure of 0.5. We didn't make any temperature adjustments, so let's do that real quick now. I'm gonna just warm it up a titch to 4700. That looks nice and solid. All right, so everything there is pretty self-explanatory. Once again, we have negative 40, negative 30, the same adjustments that we did just to pull down those highlights in skin tones, okay? With shadows and blacks, we have a shadow boost of plus 10 and a drop of negative 20 in the, the blacks. And what this does is it creates a very subtle drop in shadows where we're not losing too much detail. So if I hit J, we really shouldn't have much clipped with the exception of like these super deep shadows under here where there's no light reaching. And that's totally fine. I'm okay with that. All right, so negative 20 on clarity is our next adjustment. Again, smoothing out some of the skin. We never wanna take clarity up when we're doing these kind of portraits. We always wanna bring it down and you don't wanna go down too far because it flattens out skin too much. So negative 20 is an ideal number and what we're gonna do is we'll do a little bit of extra skin softening in just a moment. With vibrant saturation, we have the same at negative five, negative five with our HSL adjustment to pull out the reds. We have our same subtle contrast boosting tone curve. Scrolling down, we have our same sharpening settings and noise reduction, which is being applied to this image. Again, if you're doing, say, professional portrait retouch on something crazy, you might not want the noise reduction. But for this image, it's gonna be absolutely fine. If we zoom in here and look at the detail, you cannot tell that there's any loss in detail in the eyelashes or anything. It looks beautiful. And we want a little bit of that noise reduction for the pores. So we're gonna leave it just the way it is. Once again, we have a little bit of reverse vignetting just to kind of make our uh, graduation from edge to edge even. 
and that is it okay so everything's pretty much the same as before let's jump right up now and we're going to start with our adjustment brushes to kind of go through and retouch this image and the first thing when you click into the presets uh, the adjustment brush presets you're going to notice that in the retouching category they have this kind of order to it and this is actually the order of our workflow so you're basically going to start with skin softening and then move forward through the list so let's start with skin softening I'm going to select that we're going to adjust up and I like to apply it to the entire image and uh, let's make sure that our flow is actually all the way up. Let's click on uh, O so we can actually see where it's being applied to. And let's do that one more time. Okay, so we're gonna apply it over this whole thing. I'm usually kind of sloppy when I apply it the first time and then I just kind of subtract out of where I don't want it. All right, so that looks like we've applied it evenly. Now I'm gonna hold down Alt and then uh, that's gonna be Option on a Mac and we're just gonna drag right along the edge to remove it. Okay, so I just wanna pull it right off the hair. I wanna go out into this shadow area and get it off our clothes. We can shrink it down a little bit more when we get over here on a little tighter line. And we're just gonna go over the collar. Okay, that's looking good. We're gonna go over the other side, do the same thing on this side. And I'm gonna adjust my brush up a little bit. We can always adjust the, the feather too if we wanna get a little more precise, but for this tutorial, this is good enough. You guys can choose the level of preciseness that you would like. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you sit through as we go through a 50 minute super precise edit all right this is looking pretty good okay now the other th thing that we want to do is we want to adjust it out of areas that we don't want softened so i don't want the lips softened at all so we're going to pull it off the lips once again we're kind of doing a, a very quick adjustment here not keeping it too too fine of, of adjustments but i probably would zoom in if i was on my own all right this is looking good and pull it off the eyebrows okay that looks great we have this lovely little red mask let's click O so that we remove that and uh, once again we can click left and adjust right and I'm gonna show you guys something Lightroom 5 is still rather buggy if you saw what happened right now I'm gonna hit undo sometimes in Lightroom 5 when you click and drag left and right on the preset it should adjust it basically incrementally so the basically how this preset was created it's gonna make those adjustments going lighter or going stronger incrementally but you'll notice that as soon as I start dragging it resets out the preset over here to the right we get this really funky effect this is a Lightroom 5 bug that hasn't been fixed yet in Lightroom 4 you shouldn't notice this at all so Adobe please fix this bug because for now in the meanwhile we have to go through and make this adjustment manually so if you see that sometimes closing down Lightroom and reopening will help sometimes it doesn't um, we're just gonna go over the right side I'm gonna adjust the clarity up a bit we're gonna go to about negative let's go to about negative 15 we don't want to go too far I'm gonna take my sharpness up a bit and then bring my noise down a bit so we're not doing too much adjustment all right, and this looks pretty solid right there. We're gonna leave that as is. Let's go on to a new brush. We're gonna hit new, and then let's go to the next option. We don't need to do any skin desaturating because the skin looks great as it is. What we can do is do some line diminishing. So let's go ahead and zoom in now. And with this line diminishing, we can just kind of reduce the appearance of some of these lines. We're not wanting to remove them. We just want to kind of make them more subtle, and hence the term diminishing as opposed to removing. All right, so over these smile lines, we're gonna do the same thing, just kind of bring it over here and what I like to do is after I apply any adjustment like this is I like to zoom out just make sure it's not too strong of an effect that we've applied okay so I'm gonna apply right here too, kind of lighten up that area all right let's zoom out and see if it looks okay it looks totally fine if you guys want to remove any pins if you see these pins and they're over an area that you don't you know you want to be able to see just hit H it'll remove the pins temporarily but remember to turn them back on otherwise you're gonna be like where did my pins go I can't find them okay this looks good right there let's go and hit new and let's go on to the next option so now we have eye brightening we're gonna zoom into our eyes right here once again if you don't have the presets at these points you want to hit pause you want to dial in these adjustments manually over here on the right side and then hit continue on the video okay we're gonna dial in over here our adjustment and then we're gonna hold down alt option on a Mac we're gonna paint out of not only the areas that we don't want to paint but we also want to kind of follow the contours of the shadow okay so I can kind of see this shadow over our eye right here and I'm just kind of following that contour so that we're basically brightening the bright areas while leaving our shadows and it creates a very nice realistic brightening effect to our uh, eyes now eyes are an area that you want to be particularly careful with. I'm going to hit O just so I can see where my adjustment is. That looks good. You want to be very careful with eyes because uh, going too far will make your eyes glow. It's going to have this weird alien look. So I'm going to hit H and it looks okay from this view, but it looks a little bit on the bright side. What I'm going to do is hit 
G to go back to my grid view. Grid view is the best way to look at this because you can kind of see the overall luminosity of the entire image. And from here, we do see that the eyes are just a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit too bright. So let's go back here and all I'm gonna do is select that pin for my eyes. So let's go, oh, I turned off my pin, so I gotta hit H. And let's go here and just drop it by one, it's just 0.1. 0.1 will make that big of a difference, okay? So that looks great right there. We're gonna hit new. Whoops, and we're gonna to go to our next one, which is iris enhancing. Okay, let's jump right in again, and we're gonna go over the irises. This is gonna create a beautiful addition to our catch light. It's gonna add colors to the iris, but again, we're gonna to have to dial it back just a little bit because we don't want it too strong. Okay, I'm gonna hold down, uh, I'm gonna hit O to reveal my mask, and we're gonna paint this right off of the top. We don't want any of the top area covered. I'm gonna clean up the edge of the iris so it's not covering the whites at all, because the whites will get too bright. Okay, that looks good on that side. Let's do the same over here. Same thing, take it off the eyelashes and the eyelid. All right, and then off the whites and off the bottom eyelid. Okay, I also wanna subtract it from outside of the uh, pupil. We don't wanna do that over the pupil. Just make sure our pupil's okay. Okay, let's hit O and take a look and just make sure our pupil is good. Okay. This is looking solid. Let's zoom out and take a look at how it looks. So it's a little bit strong for my taste at least. I'm gonna just back it off a little bit. So let's take it down to like say 0.3. Right about there is really solid. Again, let's hit grid or G to go back to grid view and uh, take a look at this and it looks great right now. We have a nice catch light. We have great looking eyes, not too strong uh, and, and it looks really nice. Okay, let's hit D to jump back in the develop module and let's make some more adjustments. Let's go up and see if we have any others that we wanted to go with. We can do a little bit of lip enhancing. Probably don't do need to do any teeth whitening on this image because it's uh, it's actually, her teeth are extremely white. And if we go any whiter, it's gonna get too white. Okay, so again, just kind of clicking over, just going right over the lips. I'm gonna hit O to bring up my uh, overlay. This is looking good. We did a decent job. Let's just take it out of the gums. We don't want to enhance the gums because it'll make them kind of stick out a little bit. So let's not enhance anywhere over the teeth or the gums. Okay, it's looking good. Let's zoom back out. I'm gonna turn off the overlay and just take a look, make sure it looks okay. It looks totally fine. And let's see if there's anything else. I think we got it pretty much nailed there. What I'm gonna do now is just do a little bit of hair and lash. Uh, kind of enhancements, and so we're just gonna drag over the hair. It creates a very nice kind of subtle pop to our hair, just adding a little bit of saturation, a little bit of contrast. It looks really beautiful. It kind of, especially she has these brown highlights and it kind of reveals those highlights a little bit more. Let's hit O so we can see our overlay. And I'm just gonna go right over the hair. And then while holding Alt, we're just gonna kind of subtract off. I don't wanna apply it over the edge of the uh, the, the background because it will kind of, it will kind of, uh, have this little, what is it, little kind of blooming or edge effect that we don't want. Let me adjust this down. Oh, my Lightroom's going funky. All right, there we go. Okay, that looks good. Take it off here. Doesn't have to be quite perfect. What I do wanna make sure is that I'm not applying it over skin. So let's just go right over to skin, make sure that we don't have any of this effect going over that area at all. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and hit O now to uh, check out our hair. And if we want, we can tone it down. Again, let's try it. Nope, see, it still did the same thing. Stupid Lightroom. Adobe, we need your help. All right, let's just take down, uh, actually it looks pretty much okay right now. What I'm gonna do is just darken it a tiny bit overall in the image. There we go. I think we're getting a little bit better toning. Okay. That's looking pretty solid. Actually, let's take it up one tiny click. That looks great. Let's see what else we have. Let's go into, uh, actually, we didn't do our lashes. Let's see if we wanna do, the lashes look pretty bold right now, so let's not do the lashes. Okay, looking good. All right, now one thing I'm gonna do at this point is just adjust my temperature up a little bit, and I'm also gonna smooth out my skin a little bit more. I feel like I can go with a little bit more of that skin softening. So we're just gonna select that skin softening preset. I think it was this one. I'm just gonna take the clarity down a tiny bit more over those areas, maybe down to negative 25, and see if that, yeah, that looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more soft, and we're not losing a lot of detail there in the, in the, uh, in the pores. So let's just zoom into the pores and make sure our pores don't look too smooth. And it looks totally fine. 
Okay, so from here, we're almost done. All we're gonna do now is make a couple spot removal adjustments. There's one effect that I wanna do also, which is a Lightroom 5 effect. So let's show you now what we're gonna do here. Some of these will be Lightroom 5 only, so you'll have to do some of these uh, adjustments inside of Photoshop. But let's zoom into her skin. We're zooming in, by the way, by hitting space and just clicking into the area they wanna zoom to. In case you're not you don't know about that um, let's go down here let's also click now when we're clicking and dragging that's something that you can only do inside of Lightroom 5 so that's kind of one of the new features there what I'm gonna do here is just click a spot and then I'm moving the hair into place so we can kind of connect the hair up so we don't have a break in the hairline okay now generally I'm not wanting to click and drag anyway because Lightroom healing isn't going to be nearly as powerful as Photoshop. So if you want to do anything, you know, too, or basically anything more in depth, really you're better off going into Photoshop to do it. But right here we'll just click and drag on a few things. And uh, what I'm removing is basically blemishes that aren't really a part of her look. What I would say is non-distinguishing blemishes. If you remove blemishes that are kind of like a part of what they, you know, who they are and what they look like, it's going to have kind of an unnatural feel to the image. They're not going to, they're not going to like it because it won't look like them. So I'll tell you when I get to those. And that's actually like these right here. These right here I wouldn't really remove. I'm going to take off the one off her chin though. Okay, we'll leave those. If you want to diminish them, you can always diminish them by reducing the opacity and then clicking on it. Okay, so if you reduce the opacity, it's going to diminish one of those uh, little blemishes, but it's not going to remove it. But I want to keep that one right there. If we want to diminish any of them, let's diminish this one right here. Okay, that looks great. Let's go up here. This little spot right there, we want to fix that. So let's bring our opacity back up. Oops, I have that previous pin selected, so it's going to actually remove it. So let's undo that. And then let's click over here. And let's just apply a new one. So this is one of those things right here where you really need to be in Lightroom 5 to do this. Because we're clicking and we're just using this as an adjustment brush, basically. I'm going to move it over area that's similar. I'm going to move my uh, healing down, the opacity down just a little bit, so it's not as noticeable and that's looking solid I'm gonna do the same thing here just click here and just remove that little bit and then let's bring that healing all the way up and one more click here usually you want to keep the uh, you know not usually but you definitely want to keep the brush just the same size or a slightly larger than the area that you're healing out I'm going a little bit lazily about this so that's totally fine though Good enough. All right, so we are done now with this image and let's check out how far we've gone from that original. So we're done with our retouch. If I hit backslash, I can see the before. Here's the after. You can see how beautiful a job this does just within Lightroom. So if you have Lightroom only, don't worry. You can still get your images looking amazing. If you got professional headshots or whatever you're doing, using the preset system, using all the functionality of Lightroom, we can do a lot of advanced retouch work right here inside of Lightroom. So great job. And there's one other thing I want to show you before I forget, and that's the radial filter. Now, this is, again, new to Lightroom 5. But what's nice about this is we can kind of bring attention to areas that we want to with this nice little radial filter. It works the exact same way as a graduate filter or as a brush it's basically just going to apply an effect and applying it in kind of this radial fashion okay so let me just show you how it works instead of talking through it so what i want to do is basically darken the areas of the image that are not her face essentially so i'm just going to click right in the center of her face and i'm going to pull it out and then uh, let me get it to a point where let's see let's go right to about here I'm going to make it a little more oval like so you can kind of adjust the point make it a little more oval like and then we're just going to click and drag this pin right over to the left a little and what I can do is play with the feather on this so it basically controls where that effect is being applied so I want the effect to occur more at the edges than towards the center of the image so I'm going to bring the feather back uh, maybe to around about 50 so it feathers in a little bit but not too much now you might be asking well Number one, how do I do this inside of Lightroom 4? Well, inside of Lightroom 4, you have a couple different options. You can kind of get there by using uh, a graduate filter and dragging it from each side of the edges. It's, it's kind of cumbersome. It takes a while to do. You can also do it by applying uh, a, a vignette. So if you go down and you apply your vignette, you can kind of pull that center in to create this effect. But the difference with this is, is that we can change the shape and the location of this radial filter. So I can move this filter around and kind of highlight different things. So that's what makes it really nice inside of Lightroom 5 is that we have a lot more control over the shape and, and kind of where this appears uh, in our image. So it's a great new tool in Lightroom 5, one that in, its, in and of itself it's kind of uh, worth considering getting the upgrade. But uh, I would definitely wait until they fix all the Lightroom 5 bugs before doing so. All right, so we are done with our image right now. Our highlight alert popped up, so let me turn that off. And uh, let's just take a look at the final, final image here. 
Here's the before, here's the after. If we want, we can adjust the effect of this radial filter, but I like it kind of more on the subtle side, so I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. Great attention being brought to her face, and uh, really nice job, everybody. So I'll see you all in the next video.